enjoy the journey, Fo- you know, focus on the journey. Don't, don't, that's really what's going to carry you through because being in business for yourself, it's, it requires a lot of perseverance and a lot of uh, digging in. Drown out the noise, like stay in your lane, you know, focus on what you're doing. Don't try to focus on what everyone else is doing. You know, if, if you dial into what the work is and what you're doing, the money follows, right? If you're right. doing the work for the money, it's never going to work out. But if you're doing the work because you love it and that passion is there, the money will follow. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Today, we get to speak with the founders of Cadillac Homes, Susan and Paul. They run a design-build firm in the greater Boston area, and this is their origin story. Together, they have made it their mission to help their clients turn an ordinary house into a haven that they love coming home to. The Cadillacs have grown by connecting directly with your audience through their social media channels and are excited to announce that they have just launched a brand new app, Renovation Rekindle, featuring their new show with 10 half hour episodes. And in each of these episodes, you can follow along with the Cadillacs and their clients on the complete home renovation journey from beginning to end. But before you watch those amazing episodes and discover these transformations on their app, let's see how they got started and discover their origin story in this exclusive episode. I'm super excited to have them here. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time out to speak with us. Yeah, man. So this is my very first episode with two guests. So this is a one of a kind episode for sure. That's funny. It's, we've been on a few and they said that before, you know, they're like, we're not sure about doing two. We usually do one. We're like, it's just a conversation, right? It's a conversation. <laughs> Hell yeah. It. So I'm super excited because it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's a new experience for me and I'm sure you've guys done this plenty of times. So it's going to be awesome. It took a little bit of practice not to talk over each other, but we're, we're okay with that now. So hopefully we won't step on each other too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like baseball nice. signals, you know, you're, you're like, kind of. Just, just that works well, you know, just put the finger over the lips. <laughs> Love that. Okay. So let's jump right in, guys. How did you even get started with Cadillac Homes? What's your inspiration? What's your origin story? So I grew up, so Cadillac Homes is we do home renovations. We do home building. We do, we like, we don't like to call them flips. So like we do investments, we'll purchase a property, either renovate it or rebuild it. So mm-hmm. we're pretty much anything to do with the home. And we also have a real estate brokerage. So I grew up, my dad was a builder. My grandfather was a builder. So I kind of grew up in that space, mm-hmm. just kind of watching that. And as I got older, I just wanted, I just, when I think I was 23, when I built my first house and I just wanted, I don't know what, what I was thinking. I think back now, I think I was crazy. Um, and I just wanted to build a house. So I was in the business when I met Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what you were doing at that age when she was trying to build a house, but I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I was in a party with my friends. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, when I met Susan, I was doing sales at the time and I was also trying to get on the local fire department. Um, so then I, I had met Susan, I got on the department shortly thereafter. Um, and then, uh, you know, I worked 24 hour shifts, you know, a couple of days a week. So I had some time off. So I was like, I'll learn how to golf or something. And she's like, no, you're going to learn construction and go to work. I guess I guess <laughs> I'm going to learn construction and go to work. <laughs> He uh, bought the golf clubs, but he never actually got to use them. Never got yeah. to use the clubs. I think no. we might still have them. We do somewhere. have them. They're they're collecting dust somewhere in the Some, corner. Somewhere in the basement. Yeah. They yes. could be they could be nice, uh, you know, ornaments to put on the wall or exactly. you know, decoration or whatever. It's like a trophies, kind of right. I just yeah. hang up like I use them. I can stare at them. I and could be like, use one them day to stage a house with. You you could yeah, yeah. I could you. use them for demo on it maybe maybe that's all I have to do. See, yeah. Janae just gave us a new use for those. Thank you, Janae. Yes, <laughs> yes. you betcha. Hacks that's and it's hobbies, all right? imagination. So, so uh, yeah, I thought I was going to golf and mm-hmm. learn how to do golf. I should say because I don't golf. And uh, I got into the construction with Susan. She kind of wrote me in, and then we've kind of been all in since uh, for the last fifteen years. So you know, wow. when I first started doing it with her. It was very, uh, economy was tough. It was 2008, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. 2007, 2008. Uh, that, was, that was a crazy times for sure. Yeah. 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 So we we were like getting into it in the thick of it. And then the jobs that we were doing were not um, any worthy of putting on any social media platform. No. <laughs> <They> weren't like, <laughs> it wasn't work. You're like, yes, look at this. This is beautiful. It was, you know, digging holes and yeah. basements and putting lally columns in and structural work. You know, nothing pretty that you can yeah. post that people would be like, wow, that's nice, you know, so. It wasn't a lot of, I mm-hmm. want to do this project. It was a lot of, I need to do this project, you know, structural work, basement work. You know, we have old homes around here in Boston mm-hmm. and fixing foundations and things like that. So it was a lot of fun, right, Paul? It, it was miserable, <laughs> but it was, but I, I would not trade it in for anything because it really teaches you, oh, you yeah. know, what guys, you know, do, like how mm-hmm. the craftsmanship that goes with building houses and how, um, people did it years ago, you know, to current times. Um, so it really, you know, it it humbles you a little bit when you're sitting oh, yeah. there in a hole in the basement. You're like, guys do this every day, eight plus hours a day. You know, it's hard work, you know. It's, it's hard. And absolutely. I'll, also, like these old houses, thinking about how, how when those houses were built, that they didn't have the tools and technology that we have now, just mm-hmm. all the handwork. It's crazy. Wow. So okay. okay. It humbles you. It does. End. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And when when you get humbled is when the greatest learnings come from because you're frustrated. You're like, oh my God, this is so much work, but you got to get through it. And that journey is what, the journey is what builds you. I mean, you guys have been doing this for 15 years, which is, which is, you know, uh, amazing. Hi, uh, what's that? Sorry, I'm I'm trying to come up with a word, but I can't. (laughs) That happens to me all the time. Don't worry about it. We like to call it crazy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's an awesome crazy. And let me tell you, so so you guys been building homes, renovating them, breaking them down, building, you know. And what's crazy is my wife was telling me a couple of weeks ago, at least at least a month ago or two months ago, before our fourth kid came, and she's like, I want to build a custom home. I'm like, all right, why don't we just put a date? Let's just put a date when you want that done and God will create ways, you know, to for us to get it done. So this was just a couple of months ago. So we put the date down, 2027, 16th. So that's the date where we're going to have a custom home built. And guess who I'm talking to? Well, we have, you know we have four kids too so we uh we're in the same boat so yeah. you know uh wow. you will you will Janet, my man sooner or later you'll mm-hmm. understand that your wife is going to want that house to function a certain way oh and yeah there's nothing you can do about that <laughs> you just have I, to let her do her thing and I, then you also have to just realize that sooner or later you'll understand that you're you're a guest in your own house that's just how it is man well all all i ask is that I, as long as i have a studio yeah in my home so damn cameras turn off because the lens cap so this is my home studio in my basement uh, and i built it out past two years because i wanted a place where i can go do my do my podcast do my uh, video recording do my courses do my trainings like all of that stuff requires video yeah and if i can just come here press like i was out of the house five minutes before i had to come in and start recording Right. So were we. Right. <laughs> so I drove in. I was like, 
hey Siri, studio time, it turns the lights on and I'm ready to go. That's awesome. Here Efficiency. Yeah. Efficiency, right? Yeah. I mean, those loving- are the things when you're building a custom home, you know, that, that's the yes. part of the fun and doing custom and doing renovations is talking to the clients and finding out like, you know, what do you need? What do you need mm-hmm. for that day to day? What's your day to day like, you know, for you having that where you can just say, hey, I need this you know, hey, Siri, I need this ready when I get home and it's done. Yeah. But that saves you so much time. It, you know, it's your, your day-to-day living. It's, you know, it just does so much. So when, you know, when people call us and just, you know, even say, I want to renovate my kitchen, it's not mm-hmm. really about the cosmetic of I want new cabinets. <laughs> Usually it's like, okay, like when I'm in the kitchen, I'm bumping into someone or, mm-hmm. you know, or people are crowding me or there's nowhere to sit or there's not enough room or, you know, I have all this stuff on my counter and it's driving me crazy. So like yeah. for us, it's like digging into like, okay, what, what are your roadblocks? What's driving you crazy? And what can we do to make this a better day to day for you? It's it's really digging into what you do not like about the house the most, right? Because right. there's things that you do that you're like, I, you know, your wife will probably say, I can't stand, you know, A, B and C about mm-hmm. your kitchen or whatever your space. Right. right? Yeah. So it's a, sometimes I think it's a, a little bit of a mistake of getting ahead of people when they, buy a house and they renovate it right away because yeah. you got to learn the house you know you, you got to live it in. yeah you got to learn the house you got to mm-hmm. feel how you're going to operate in that house because mm-hmm. you might think oh i'm going to put a table here and put this there and then it doesn't fit it doesn't yeah. work you know so you got to really learn the house you got to you know you, you guys are talking the same language you got to learn the house figure out what you really don't like and then we can come in and adjust and fix those things and then try to make it all flow for you that's you know that's how we kind of operate because like susan was saying everybody has cosmetic pieces they do not like my bathroom yeah. you know that's a that's it's a given it's like i could i say it's the wheel of fortune letters you know how they give you the standard letters and then you get a few <laughs> extra the standard letters in this is my kitchen's ugly my bathroom's ugly yeah so now we got to peel it back a little more okay what mm-hmm. are those reasons that we're you know why else are we here so yeah. susan's very good about really peeling those layers back with clients and listening to what they're saying you know i oh i got to go across there to get my spices mm-hmm. you know we had one client who said i have to go to my garage to get a broom Every time I can't stand it, I hate it. So we made a broom closet for her, and she was was the happiest thing that she, you know, she loved it. She was like, "This is this is what I wanted." So it's just solving those problems. Yeah, Yeah. we have one client who called us to put an addition on because they needed four bedrooms, and I went up on the second floor, and it was like this huge open concept, but only broken into two bedrooms. And I Mm -hmm. said, "Well, you don't really need an addition. We just need to rework this floor." And just hadn't thought of it because I just saw it the way the way it was, and you know, and so we kind of did a new floor plan. So mm-hmm. no addition needed and it solved, you know, it solved the bedroom problem. Wow. And, and one thing I think that happens a lot of times is people, they get in kind of a panic mode, right? They're having another child, you know, maybe a parent's moving in, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And then it's like, we need space, right? That's just, we need space, right? Because the, the house is getting more crowded. Yeah. So then they just throw on an addition, but it's not thought out with the rest of the house to really tie it in. So yeah. that's a big piece. That's why a lot of these houses we go to now, there'll be these additions on these weird looking, you know, an addition's not supposed to look like an addition. It's right. always supposed to look like it was part of the original Gets structure. funky sometimes. <laughs> right. But like really like, you know, we've had people with a ranch, you know, so it's three mm-hmm. bedrooms on the first floor and then they put a second floor on. Now there's three bedrooms upstairs, three bedrooms downstairs. You know, it just doesn't make sense. It's not a ranch it? anymore. No, right. correct. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You can't. Yeah. Wow. The more we talk about this, the more it's waking up my like things about our house, right? Like my wife's like, oh, I want to I take down all the rooms in the basement and uh, I want to put a bedroom here. I'm like how just how would we just hold on? We just did the kitchen because yeah. our kitchen we lived. We've been living in the house for about five years. Kitchen. There's no cabinets. There's only like five cabinets on the bottom. No wall cabinets. There's this beautiful arch made out of brick with okay. built-in wall oven and a stovetop. Awesome. It was, it was beautiful, but it wasn't doing anything for right. us. Right. <laughs> so yeah, we had to, yeah. That's totally part of it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have these ideas in your head. You're like, Balance. this is going to be awesome. And then you get into it and you're like, maybe, you know, it, mm-hmm. in theory it sounds good, but sometimes maybe it's, you know, it's not going to work that much. Yeah. Or it might look pretty, but then functionally, I'm, you know, yeah, sure yeah. with the fourth on the way, you know, you need to think about form and function where it looks exactly. nice. And, you know, you can't, you can't function with 
four kids with five cabinets. It's just not, the math right. does not work. <laughs> right, exactly. It, it Full does not function, work well. fun. You need all of those. Paul's yeah, the CFO. Fun. He's the chief fun officer. So Paul brings all the fun. I'm right. the boring one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, you need the function and the fun, right? So we got the balance with Susan and Paul. Perfect. Dude, so we've, we've kind of learned about your journeys. Um, Susan's been in the builder uh, generation, right? Your generational builder. Yeah. Paul's come from the sales. We didn't get a little back. We didn't get any background on what, what your parents did or what your dad or your grandfather did. Were they salespersons or? Oh, my, my father grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania. He, okay. he was always kind of a blue collar guy, but he ended up in kind of a white collar position. He was a chief financial officer for a long time for a company up here in Boston. Um, my mother was a nurse until she started having kids and then she was home, you know, mm -hmm. she's raised us so um you know the the way i went into firefighting i think it was um just i always wanted a job that my kids would be proud of me mm. that i could feel good at the end of the day going home and um you know i felt like that was a good path for me um which it was you know if you said to me do you think you would land on this path with susan building houses i would have said no no way you Not know really, yeah you know, I'm a risk taker because I, I, I don't care about going into a burning building, you know, <laughs> jumping out of a plane. Sure. I mean, you know, it's a different life, kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Life's boring if you don't take any chances. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you took a chance starting a podcast. Like, you know, yeah. you, you got to take chances. You can't you can't get a payout if you don't take a chance. Right. You can play Absolutely. it safe, but that's no fun. Um, so, you know, doing all this construction with Susan, like it really evolved along the way, that, you know, as we were. You know, we just kind of operated the way that we always operated, not really looking at what is this person doing? What is this person doing? What is this yeah. person doing? We were always trying to stay in our own lane, kind of. And, um, you know, the things that we do. And I remember asking a client one day, I was like, how come you hired us? You know, I like to just find out, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what, you know, why they picked us over someone else. And they were like, we knew you weren't going to do what was just on the plan. Mm. And I was like, interesting, which we didn't. We, we argued with them about the kitchen. I said, who builds what's on the plan? That's so boring. <laughs> The plans, once we get the frame up, I, I say you burn the plans and you mm -hmm. just do what the house feels like it needs. Yeah. And I thought all the builders did that, but he was like, no. <laughs> no, I didn't mean, do that. No, I mean, and it's funny because we fought with them about their kitchen layout. And like we did a whole big renovation and we fought with them about their kitchen layout. And, you know, it we're like, listen, this is going to be better. Which like, it was, a, it was, a, you know, a lot of people might've just said, sure, we'll do what you want. Yeah. We were like, no, it's, this is not going to work. Like the function's not going to be good. Like that's what we were trying to, you know, tell them. Mm. And they reluctantly agreed. And then they were like, okay, we're, they were thrilled when we were finished, but they were like, we're glad that we did that. But you know, when we're fighting with them, it's not a fight. It's like, it's like right. passion. It's like, more like, like a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can make this better well, for you. We want you to understand mm -hmm. that. I knew looking at, the, I mean, you know, we, we don't always rely on, on the plans. And I knew that the plan, the kitchen was not the best kitchen, but it didn't matter. I said, we can redo the kitchen later, you know, as we go along in the project. And, you know, we were willing to just kind of like stop the project. So I was like, that kitchen layout is not <laughs> going to work. <laughs> and we just, you know, we just were, we just kind of stopped. We were like, we're not moving forward until you agree that we're not doing that kitchen that's on the plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's hard to tell people like they don't know what they it's don't hard because we do them all the time so I knew exactly right. what it was going to look like and you know there was something funky with the ceiling and mm. you know we you know we we want it to look a certain way when it's when it's done especially this was like the main portion of the house when you walk in we want yeah. to walk in and have it be a wow and it's funny because that project was I don't know six or seven years ago and still to this day we take clients to see that house and it's <laughs> You know, you walk in, it's just got this view right out to the back. So it's, nice. um, they were happy, they were, they were very happy after, but it's, you know, some, when you're going through a renovation, it's, it's tough because you don't do them all the time as a homeowner, you're spending a ton of money, mm -hmm. you are displaced, your house is a disaster, you're, you know, everything's expensive, Decision you don't know fatigue. what it's going to look oh, like, yeah. there's so many decisions to it. So like, you're so stressed out mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's a very stressful time. So for us, we always try to keep that in mind, you know, with clients knowing that yeah. it, it is, it's one of the most stressful things people can go through. So just keep that in mind when you're building your custom house, that it's going to be <laughs> stressful. Oh. oh, absolutely. 100% because even, uh, yeah, I mean, you can plan everything out ahead of time, but we always say everything works on paper. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually get into it, you're like, wait a minute, this seemed okay on the drawings, but 
you know, in real life, maybe this isn't as big as I thought, or it's, you know, it's bigger than I thought and we need to make it small, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's all like Play-Doh. You got to mold it along the way. <laughs> exactly. You, know what I'm along you the gotta way. take that house and you gotta, you know, you look at it each step and mm-hmm. can you make it better? Can it work better? And that's just taking a step back and, and reassessing it. And yeah. that's what ma- makes it the best product at the end of the day for, for, wh- for the people who are living it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's what a perfect example of what Paul does. I ramble and he's like, oh, wait, that's Play-Doh. And then you're like, okay. You're like, I have no idea what Susan's talking about, but Play-Doh, I get Play-Doh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In the world of distractions, it's layman's terms works a lot better, you know, because yeah. it's, it's also relating that information like Susan's saying to people where they understand it because mm-hmm. Um, contractors will talk their language, which a lot of people don't understand what we're yeah, talking about. It. Right. Cause they're not in the field. So they shouldn't. And you know, it's really d- breaking it down when they can understand what we're actually telling them. They're much more comfortable overall with the whole process. Yeah. So it's a little bit on our end of, of educating them the proper way to make sure that they know what they're getting. You know, the last thing we want to be is like, Oh, I, I didn't know the light was going there at the end of the project. Like, right. What do you mean? We talked about this three times. So like, you know, so, so it's like, it's hard. Cause yeah. like for us, we look at things and we're like, Oh yeah, that's going to be like that. But you know, always mm-hmm. keeping in mind that for a homeowner, you know, they're in other fields and they're not looking at houses all the time. So what's right. obvious to us isn't always obvious, you know, to the client. Yeah. It's, it's like I said, you got to mold it along the way. It'll make you it gotta mold along you know, the way. That's, right. that's so true. And, um, I love I love the stories. I love uh, I love the the learned experiences, right? That you're then dependent on, you know, and guiding the customer along the way and getting the most efficient and the product that they're gonna love for the rest of their life. They can because they're living in there. Yeah. It doesn't right. It, let, let's just say that they they think that something is good and you come and build it, and they don't like it. Because they've been living in it like, ah, uh, we did the work, what you asked for. I'm like, yes, but I guess we didn't think through. I'm like, yes, well, that's where, you know, we, that's why we, you know, told you the thing that we told you. And software development, graphic design, logo design, all of this stuff, right? Yeah. Having that experience gives us so much, so much of a, uh, advance. Uh, knowledge of of um, how things are going to play through when you actually get it done. Totally, yeah, and we feel like that's our responsibility to kind of relay that to. Yeah. The and then we also go back, like Paul likes to go back to clients and ask, like, what they liked in the house. What what they is there something else that they wish feedback would- need the feedback loop. Got to have the yeah. feedback. It's actually been very good for us because we've had, you know, when we build a spec house, which when I say spec, I mean spectacular. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, spec. <laughs> yeah, they call them spec houses, but like flips, spec, this the worst terminology for them. Mm-hmm. You know, flips, like when I ever hear flip, you think like flipping a burger, you flip a coin, you flip in someone in the middle finger. Like it's yeah, just it's, it's too with generic. House, yeah. Right, right. It's not good. It always sounds terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and the, the worst part too is like on TV, they're always like, no, this is too much money. Ah, and it's about being inexpensive. And that's not always the case you know right. it's, you, you can put quality into it um but you know spec houses that we do we, when we build them we build them how we think that someone would operate them in you know today in current times yeah um even one that we had recently we had two offices in it you know because we knew that pe- kids people would be in homeschool mm-hmm. kids would be homeschooled and you know her and i can't share an office we're on the phone so much it you yeah. know just be get it out to work, separate. right but just having a space like you said you have your basement that you wanted to finish like everybody needs a spot, excuse me, in their house that they yeah. can like think, right? Because there's so much going on today with the distractions that yeah. sometimes you need a place where you can literally just hunker down and get some thoughts out and get things done that you need to do. So that's very important. I think that, you know, yeah. everybody needs alone time to like just focus sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a big deal to make sure that people have what they need so they can do that. You know, like you said, I go in my basement, it's all set up how I want it. Like you yeah. have it how it works for you, right? If somebody bought your house, they might be like, I don't know, this room doesn't really work for me, right? right but exactly. that works for you. That's what we try to find out. What works for that client? What do yeah. we think will, will um, you know, suffice all the needs. And then also taking, so like we, you know, we ask for us, it's not, what do you want us to do for us? It's a, t- you know, we start off with questions about how they live and everything else. So mm. from some of those feedback loops, we've heard from people, you know, I, I wish I had a spot for, you know, my robot vacuum or, or my stand-up vacuum. So those, are, that's now a question that we ask. And it's mm. funny because very often we hear, oh my God, I forgot about that. Yes, I need a spot for that. And we're like, okay, tell us what type you have so that when we, 
build out, say, the mudroom, we mm. will create a spot for that or make sure that there's an outlet or, you know, things like that, just to make sure that they are, um, you know, things were hearing from other clients that maybe they didn't think of that they thought of after mm-hmm. bringing that in for, so everyone else can have the benefit of that learned experience. It's never done. You're always it's never done. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking about my vacuum and where we put those right now. <laughs> Right. right. Yes. Storage too. Everybody. <laughs> storage, right? You gotta storage. have the storage. The air fryers, the crockpots, right. the you know all of all of those things that you know. I always ask people, what do you have to go out into another room to get? When you're in your mm-hmm. kitchen, do you have to go into the basement or out to the garage, or what do you have to leave to go yeah. get that you use all the time that you need? And then we, you know, we'll create a space for that. Or what's out on your counter every day mm. that you don't want to stare at? Let's create a space for that. Junaid's wife's like, Junaid, I need him in here. I need him. In I here. know, exactly. Yeah, I have to keep going in the basement to get him. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a button that he could just press and I just pop up, you know, on the camera? Exactly. Like, yes, <laughs> what do you need, honey? Exactly. I need him and all the kids in the basement at all times. <laughs> Your father's down there. Just leave him alone. He's quiet. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this is too much fun. This is too much fun. So I, so we've, we've gone through the journey. We've gone through the motivation. So... What keeps you motivated is solving problems for people, giving them solutions where they're going to be so excited to be in their new home, their renovated home, their spec home, their reno kitchen. And, oh, man, I wish I'd talked to you guys, you know, two years ago when we did a kitchen. <laughs> That's right. But you got you to date a 2027. So. I know, right? We, we've got we got a date already. And what's what's cool is that just like you were saying, you know, it's never what's on the paper that you build out. It and it all started with me, like, oh, we were we were at IKEA. I'm like, oh, honey, how about we get some some of these cabinets in our <laughs> kitchen? You know, they have, they're more roomier. You can pull the drawers out, and that's where the journey began. Like six months before we even like put the stuff down. Yeah, we had some people come in, and and now it's for the better over time. Now we have a little place. So the the whole brick and layment, right? We took all the brick out, and then we're gonna initially take out all the brick. And I was like, wait, let's 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 just leave this part of the brick, the and then we'll have this yeah. shelf over here where you can put your stuff, and then the trash can could fit right here because all the cabinets that we putting the wall of cabinets we were putting were not gonna fit in the space that it was initially. So it all worked out really well. It's like, oh. This is part of the house now. It's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, like you said, people have ideas amazing. of what they want, you know, yeah. but they just don't know when it's executed, how it actually yeah. will function. Yeah. And, you know, the look might be there, but the function might not be there. So, like, if you spend a ton of money in a renovation and yeah. it's beautiful, but it doesn't fill your needs of how you operate, you're yeah. just going to be upset that it doesn't work, you know. Right. So that's what happens a lot of times. They get, you know, someone gives someone a plan and they're like, mm-hmm. this is what we want. It's like, should. okay. And that's what they do, you know. Yeah. I, I know a guy a while ago told me that he hated these cabinets these people were putting in. I'm like, well, did you did you tell him that that's not a good, you know, not like a current cabinet? It's not a good. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm just doing what they want. And I was like, well, I'd be pissed if somebody <laughs> yeah. did that to me. That's why we tell people, like, mm-hmm. look, I, my job is to give you the information. If, if I say, hey, these aren't really current cabinets. This is outdated. I want to give you that information mm-hmm. so you can decide what you want to do. If you're like, nope, I yeah. love them. Like you have to live there, not us at the end of the right, day. Right, exactly. Like, what do you exactly. like, right? So if you're like, nope, these are what I want. I love it. Or, you know what, thank you for telling me. Let's find something else. So, right, because the worst is that we just do what you ask. And then later the client is like, oh, I think those cabinets are a little dated. And, mm. you know, if we say, yeah, that's what we thought, they'd say, well, why didn't you tell me? Right. <laughs> Right. They, that, that's why that's why we give our opinion on it. That's mm-hmm. this is our field. So it's you know But your kitchen renovation, that's your practice run for yeah your new house, right? Because I'm exactly. sure that there's some things that are like, Oh, I wish we could have fit this or mm-hmm. I w- oh, you know, we could could have tweaked that. It's a little, you know, little practice run. Janine, I'm gonna give you a hack right now. Sure. Don't design your own kitchen. No. No, no way. No, you want it you want it done by a professional. You want to lay it out. You want to tell them the problems, you know? Right. I mean, that's why we all have jobs, right? Because there's problems well, to be exactly, solved. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I did the first time around. I was like, okay, let's let's design the kitchen based on how it is, but replacing all the cabinets. Right. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we got we got 50%. We got, what, 30% more cabinet space yeah. using the same space. But then we had this guy come in. He had like 100,000 Instagram followers. And my wife like, oh, I want to I'll have to. I want him to come in and give us an idea. 
So yeah. he came and he gave us an idea and, and the price was like monumentous. I'm like, oh, we're not looking to spend $70,000 on, on the kitchen right now. Yeah. yeah. But the design that she, he, he gave us was really thoughtful. You know, he thought through like the heart of the kitchen is, is a stove. You know, you should see that first and foremost. The fridge yeah. can be in, the, in, in, you know, hidden away in the cabinets or whatever. So I was like, wow, this is really interesting. So we talked to them and I was like, okay, maybe we'll go with this plan and scratch the plan that I came up with because <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Well, that's why it's good that's that you're not doing the house now that you can. I know, right? Yeah. I'm so glad that I met you guys because, you know, it's going to be a Cadillac home, you know, yeah, either go Cadillac or plans. nothing else. Yeah. I mean, people ask all the time too. Susan will look at plan. She, she just has this natural ability between, cause you know, we have a, a real estate brokerage we have the construction company, mm -hmm. then we have, you know, another company that handles all the flips and everything. So being encompassed in all of those things, you know, yeah. she's had clients that like call her and they're like, Hey, I want to sell my house. I want you to find me a house. I want you to build me a new one, you yeah. know? So it's been the full circle, you know? So it's really a one-stop yeah. shop and designing it. So it's like build, design, sell, you know, the whole shebang. All, all that. So it's like, you can yeah. come and get a one-stop shop if you come. Or it's like, here are all the things I want. Can I add it? You know, can I put an addition on my house? And sometimes the answer is, we can put this addition on your house, but the house mm -hmm. is going to be worth that money, right? right. So that's the other piece too, right? So as you're building, are you building for the market so you're not overbuilding so that you're, you know, the money that you're investing mm -hmm. is being retained by the value of the house because yeah. there, there does come a point, you know, where sometimes people come, they want to put multiple additions on and I'm like, oh, you know, we can do that, but the house is never going to be worth what you're going to spend right. to do that. Let's look at some other options. And Sometimes people say, I don't care. I want to spend the money. I'm not moving out of this location, which is totally fine. But mm -hmm. as long as they know that going in, right. we're, we're good, you know, versus, you know, we've walked into some houses where people have put done some work and then it's like for what they want to do. Some of the work has to be undone. So it's really, you know, we really mm -hmm. try to look at the, the whole house and, you know, like to your point where you said you spent six months thinking about the kitchen before you did it, you know, yeah. for us, a lot of our clients, I mean, they're, you know, we put a lot of our stuff out on social media. We put videos out on social media mm -hmm. and a lot of our clients will follow us for a year plus before they reach out to us because yeah. like, you know, like I say, you're not buying a sweater. It's a big, you know, it's a yeah. big, it's a big, a lifestyle it's a big change. deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so it's, you know, so that's one of the things for us. One of the reasons like we put everything out there is one, because like we know it's, it's a process. Somebody mm -hmm. isn't going to call us and say, okay, I'm ready to do my kitchen tomorrow. Right. It's so even from that first phone call, it's still a process. But even before right. that, it is, um, you know, we put our stuff out there because people see us and, and they know who we are before they call, right? I feel mm -hmm. like now a lot of people want to know who are they calling, who are they reaching out yeah. to, who are they going to get? Um, you know, they see all the crazy videos that um, Paul does where he's like running through showers, fully clothed. And um... <laughs> like I said, you got to have fun, you know, you got to have fun, man. Times have just shifted. You know, it's like sales, all that. It's, it's the, the, the information is so accessible now. Mm -hmm. So it's like when people call, they just want the truth. You know, right. they don't want to, they don't be... want a sales pitch. They right. want to know, they want to know, like they can see very clearly, okay, this is what they do. This is the style. I know what I'm going to get with Paul. Paul's going to make some weird, funny video at my house and people look forward to that. But yeah. you know, some people might, if they look at us and like, yeah, I don't know if I like those two, they're not going to call us right. and that's, that's okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It kind of attracts our avatar client, I guess, you know, Absolutely. That's, that's who calls us. Someone, you know, that's right. I'm sure there's people out there watching and be like, Paul's an idiot. I don't, I can't stand that guy, you know? And that's <laughs> like, okay. Good. We I'm don't not, want you I'm either. Not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly. everybody's cup of tea. It's fine. <laughs> I understand. No, but it's really um, putting yourself out there really allows people to get to know you. So that, that's the thing. We're not actors. Mm -hmm. You know, we always wanted to be authentic. If somebody met yourself, us on the yeah. street, yeah, they, they, that's just like they are, you know, on their videos. That's what we always right. wanted. They're like, does Paul act like that all the time? I'm like, yes, all <laughs> the time. <laughs> True, story. <laughs> True story. Sadly for me. <laughs> but we always wanted people to, you know, we, we, you know, the social media led mm -hmm. into a, a lot of, you know, it led us down a path. I don't think we anticipated because initially, no. We started doing the videos. Um, we hired our video guy to do it for uh, the real estate. Mm -hmm. So she's like, let's just start with the construction ones first so we can just kind of get our feet wet and then we'll yeah. start doing the real I estate. I wanted to practice because I said, I don't want to mess up the yeah. real estate. You know, yeah, so yeah. we started the construction videos and I mean, they were terrible, but yeah. I mean, they, you know, they started gaining some traction and they just kind of took off. And, you know, that was what, five years ago. Yeah, it snowballed yeah. what we never anticipated it would do. So it's just That's people right. kept 
asking for more. They want to see more and more and more. And that, that kind of pushed us down this path of the show, you know, I love it. Gap. so that's why we named the show renovation rekindle. Cause we wanted people to fall back in love with their house. Cause mm. when you first look at your house, there's something about it that you, that you love you, you envision there's a belief, a hope that like you can have something there. Um, and you know, that's what we want to do. Come in and make that a reality. You know, absolutely. People love it. You know, we, we kind of joke with clients. We're like, we never want you to leave home after we're done. <laughs> We've had clients call us back. We haven't left. Stay, <laughs> you know, stay so in your house. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That they, you know, I cause I that. think a lot of people like come, you know, if they have a job they don't like, and then they come home to a house that keeps breaking, mm -hmm. you know, they leave the house a lot and go out and they they're just not hang out in the so car. Like, yeah. Right. And Susan, and I love our house. So we don't, we like being home, you know? So yeah. that's the whole thing. If you have a house you love, you don't mind being home. I know? love being in my office because I made it what I wanted to be. I can spend an entire day here without any problem. There's restrooms right around, you know, right around the corner. Yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Perfect. Right. <laughs> so, guys, my God, this has been a, such a fun conversation. Thank you, Susan and Paul. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and you guys are going to share three hacks to take away for our superpreneurs. So we'll be right back. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Hey guys, welcome back to the episode we've been speaking with Susan and Paul Cadillac over at Cadillac Homes. They're amazing human beings. We've have been we've been having an amazing conversation, a lots of fun stuff here. And uh, I don't know if you can hear my daughter in the background. We have four kids too. It's white noise. Kids, so. <laughs> white noise. <laughs> so white noise. White noise, my man. Going, no, she's coming it. crying. She's coming crying oh. asking for me. <laughs> so one like daddy's gonna save me. Yes, daddy's he is. It's all right, I'll carry it right now. So <laughs> welcome to Hacks and Hobbies. I'm filling in right now for Junaid. He has a for a baby emergency. He's got a baby he's got a baby emergency going on right now. I bet now. mom is being unfair and she's like, My daddy is gonna fix this. Yeah, he's uh you know, right now he's dealing with like um, the tigers. <laughs> the kids are getting a little rambunctious. He's gonna whip him into shape, you know. <laughs> He's got the, the Roadcaster Pro in action. He yeah. does. Yes. You, you, right now in the middle of a podcast, you have to get off to help your kids. Got to get up. Totally understandable. Make sure the kid, you know, the kids are lined up. The, the older siblings letting them watch, you know, Daniel Tiger and whatnot. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got kids of all ages, you know, yeah. from 12, 7, and 4, and now 0. Wow. Second you step out of the room, it's like... You know, you're trying to manage. Exactly. Hold stay on, guys. Corner. You stay in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So as you heard, it's it's a fun, fun household with four kids and being podcaster, right? Both, both of us are podcaster. We guest and, and, you know, show up. So Susan and Paul shared three hacks to take away for the superpreneurs so that we can use them immediately. The three hack as a, three hacks as a superpreneur, I would say one is enjoy, enjoy the journey, Fo you know, focus on the journey. Don't, don't, that's really what's going to carry you through because being in business for yourself, it's, it requires a lot of perseverance and a lot of uh, digging in. Drown out the noise, like stay in your lane, you know, mm -hmm. focus on what you're doing. Don't try to focus on what everyone else is doing. You know, if, if you dial into what the work is and what you're doing, the money follows, right? If you're right. doing the work for the money, it's never going to work out. Yeah. But if you're doing the work because you love it and that passion is there, 
the money will follow. You know, yeah. it's, it's really that in do video would be another hack, I would say, right? Yeah. I mean, be, being on, you know, video and putting your, yourself out there, mm. you know, I feel like today's consumer wants, you know, they want authenticity. They want to know who they're doing business with. I think that's super important now, you know, and, you know, putting yourself out there and being, being authentic and being open and upfront with people, you know, people don't, don't want to be sold. They want, they want to know what they're getting. Yeah. It's a much more, you know, open economy right now. I feel like people just want, they just want that transparency from all businesses. So, they do, yeah. you know, being authentic, I think is being authentic and being a problem solver. You know, if you're solving problems for your clients, I think that's a good place to be. And, and admit your mistakes. It's, I love it's that. Okay. Yeah. Like you're human. You know what I mean? Like we make mistakes on jobs too. And, you know, yeah. we, will, like, you know, rectify them. It's just, it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody knows that, you know, you're not, yeah. you're not, you know, if you, if you hit four out of 10 balls, they put you in the hall of fame. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's right. You know, <laughs> nobody's perfect. You know just what I mean? Keep doing so it. Just keep hitting it's okay those to balls. Be, yeah. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to admit your mistakes to your clients. And I think that they can relate to that, you know, better when you can, when you can admit that. I love that. All right, sweet. Thank you for the three hacks. Um, I absolutely love them. Show up on video. I'm going to do backwards. Show up on video. <laughs> Keep yep, do doing video. what you're doing. Stay in <laughs> your lane. Your mistakes. Stay in your lane. Yep. And wow, I love that. People that think that they stink on video, everybody does. So don't. everybody does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like no, nobody goes on like there. You know, if you were really that good, you'd be an actor or an actress, right? So it's, exactly. It's like, you know, exactly. the only way to get comfortable is to be uncomfortable. Just be uncomfortable. That's, be it. You, that's how you get comfortable is you, when you are uncomfortable, but you start doing it, you will get comfortable with it. Yeah. You know, not that Susan, that. I think we're over the moon, these top, you know, TV reality type people. We just love what we do and we put it out there. And fortunately people follow us and like us. And like I said, we, we hope everyone will come download our app, Renovation Rekindle. Yeah. Watch our episodes. We have 10 episodes on there. They're full projects from beginning to end. So it's like what it looked like before, you know, what, what it got taken to. And then we reveal it to the clients and it's a true, true reveal. I mean, I went to great lengths to hide things from them. <laughs> wow. I'll have to check it plywood, out. Yeah. I put plywood walls up. One, one of them was working from home. I put plywood up around the whole area and changed the lock on the door. So he couldn't get in. He's like, how do I get in? I'm like, you won't, you'll get you in won't. when we're done. Yeah. And he'd hear the noise and I'd say, oh, it looks beautiful in here. And I'd be teasing him, you know, while we're fixing <laughs> stuff. And he's like, I hate you. I'm like, no, you don't. You love me. <laughs> no, so, it, you know, it's all in good fun. And they were, you know, blown away at the end. Nice. You know, it's really cool to be in that moment, I think, with people when they get to see their house as they, they know what they want. They know what they like, but they mm -hmm. can't always articulate it well. And that's where yeah. I think Susan really nails it down is like she really can pull those few things out of their head and pull this amazing design together in this this flow and function everything that they wanted but they nice. couldn't articulate it you know so it's really quite a skill that she has in that sense to, to pull all that together and, and make it what people want i love it well let's jump right into the six questions that i like to ask my guests i know this is going to be a lot of answers but let's jump right in anyways <laughs> i'll try to make mine as short as possible <laughs> yes right. what is the one hobby that you wish you got into Paul would be golf. <laughs> no, it no, no, it wouldn't be golf. I gave up on golf. No. I gave up on golf. I gave golf. <laughs> not, not golf. Not golf. Um, uh, for me, I'd probably say I wish I was a little more musically inclined. Mm. I recently got a harmonica because I was like, you know what? It's just a cool instrument. I like yeah. it. I play the triangle in the show because it's such a basic instrument. And, yeah. the, you know, our producer was like, how do you want to do like, you know, demo day and stuff? And I was like, I want to play the triangle. He's like, what? I'm like, I want to play the triangle. And he goes, that's hilarious. Yes, we're doing that. So every time we start a project, we're like, it's demo time. I hit the triangle in the episode. So, you know, it's just anybody can play it. It's very fun, you know? So it's like, I like those kind of things where, you know, nobody wants to feel stupid. Right. To do something that's right. That's so true. And that's part of our process too with teaching clients, right? If they don't understand that information and they feel like, you know, they don't want to ask a question because they feel stupid and they're not stupid. They just don't understand the language you're telling them. So yeah. it's a big piece, but I would be harmonica or piano or something like that. I think that's a cool instrument. So I would probably be more musical. What about you, Susan? <laughs> yeah. What about you, Susan? <laughs> what hobby would you do? <laughs> so I crochet a little bit, but mm. I wish I knew how to do it more. Like I can do a blanket, but I can't do like, like hat. Hat, she's an old yeah. soul Janine. she's an old soul <laughs> and i really wish i had the time to figure that out someday maybe someday she actually did make kit blankets for all our kids they all there have you go. Blankets. yeah yeah nice. I like 
comply with it. Our next question, what did you want to be when you were a child? I wanted to be a lawyer. Ooh. Um, I think I think I wanted to be a rock star, probably, or an athlete. Rock star. Most rock kids star. are like that, maybe. maybe rock not. star and actor. Well, you're already playing the triangle, and you have your own show. So, <laughs> I'm hoping the Boston Pops calls me for like a Fourth of July one year, and they want me to just play the triangle. You know. <laughs> well, I think we're we're putting the message out to the to the to the universe right here, and you know. They'll be calling it's pretty it, soon. Just happen, Paul. It. Yeah, they might hear this and say, you know who, you know who we get a call? It's called Paul. The universe sees it from all angles. He has his yes, own triangle. <laughs> I do have my own triangle. I have multiple triangles, actually. <laughs> Is it because you forgot one one place and you're like, I got to get another one? No, here. it's actually when I went to go buy a triangle, uh-huh. the guy in the music store was awesome. He said, you got to hit them. They all have a different sound. Mm. Not one of them sounds the same. They're like Ooh. a fingerprint. And I was like, interesting. And I got into it with him. And I actually gone back to that store a few times and I, you know, Talk to the guy. He's very knowledgeable on the instruments themselves and certain things. I'm like, and I just like hearing his his uh, insight on it. So he's like, hit them, try them out. And wow. I told him what I was using it for, and he goes, "You're gonna be just fine, kid." <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. I love that guy. Sweet. All right. Next question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? I I don't watch a lot of TV, but I think I you have a favorite TV things. show already. I do watch Stranger Things. I oh I, yes, I will admit my actually <laughs> our nine year old got us into that. He yeah. he doesn't get scared by anything, and he dragged me in, and we're both addicted. So favorite movie or TV show? My favorite movie would probably be like Step Brothers or something like mm. that. I'm a comedy guy. Watch all the comics when they come out. You know. Um, <laughs> For shows, I really liked like Homeland, and it's so sad it's mm. done. But Homeland yeah, was incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Showtime knocked it out of the park with some of those, the, like Dexter when that kind of came back. Those, those nice. murder shows. You know, all the women like the murder shows. Susan's a big murder we show do. fan. <laughs> I think she's gonna know how to murder me one day and get rid of the body. I have no idea. I have so many ideas. <laughs> she's got ideas. Yes. Skin me in home. All right. right. Next question. <laughs> What what movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Oh, got to play qu- character. It's a good question. What, what was yours? What's the one where the guy gets stuck on an island by himself? That would be me. I just want to be by myself. <laughs> that's on that. Castaway. Oh, that's Tom Hanks. Yes, that that's Tom Hanks. What was Castaway. that? Um, Castaway. Castaway. Yeah. Tom yeah. Hanks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I would do that. I'd be like, yep, I'm by myself, nobody's around. Yes, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be. I'd probably try to be Top Gun. You know, Tom mm. Cruise and Top Gun. Hell yeah! You know, there you pretty, go. Pretty badass planes they pretty fly. Pretty badass. Around. Oh, yeah. I'm, I love that. Shoot. Yeah. Next question. Who is your favorite superhero? Susan. <laughs> She's my superhero. Paul. You Can know? I say Paul? He's my superhero. I love that. Oh, my God. You guys are cute. <laughs> I like uh, that. His yeah. superpower is, uh, you know. My superpower is stupidity, <laughs> Junaid. I don't know it's if you not. know how much of a superpower that is. That's it works well on video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People keep wanting to come in back to it, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. This the uh, I think I like the Marvel characters. Any of the, the they're all they've gotten so much better over the time. But they have. I've got a yeah. whole poster board of them right here. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean the kids are into them. Like they're cool. Like Stan Lee was like incredible how he came with Spider Man. I mean he's just like a he's a legend to me. I mean he guys incredible what he thought of and how it's all taken shape. It's crazy. Nice last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? A board game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be sorry. Yeah. I was going to go with Scrabble, but I just don't think it stands up to Paul's answer. So I'm just going to leave Paul's answer there and call it a day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'd have sorry. To be, yeah. Sorry. That's, I love that. <laughs> A big motto in my life. I have to apologize a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. I love that. I love that, man. So we know where to find you at CadillacHomes.com or at Cadillacs on Instagram. We'll yeah. be sure to include our links to the cool stuff you've got, got going on on the social medias, even the app that you're coming out with. When is the app coming out? The, so, the app's currently out yeah, now. So the yeah. app's it's out right now. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to go yep. download it and watch some rekindling shows that's right yep. make sure you get it download it subscribe now <laughs> that's what you want to do so the app's called renovation rekindle and the entire season one of the show is on there there's 10 episodes they're only you know half hour each yeah and season two is coming out this fall so we're in the middle of uh filming and finishing that up 
Yeah, there's that. some really, really cool, cool stuff on the first season. We did uh, a star ceiling in a, in a, we did a movie theater in an attic for someone, for a client um, that we show. Yeah, it's cool. It's a star ceiling and it twinkles. It's got a shooting star and stuff. Oh so my God, I'm going to check it out. There's, there's a lot of cool features. Whenever people bring some of that text up to me, I'm like, I don't know how to do it, but I will figure it out. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, let's do that. So uh, yeah, you should check it out. It's a pretty drastic renovations. So it's cool. It's inspiration. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, guys. This was a lot of fun. I'll be in touch and uh, we'll let you know when the episode drops. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll... thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.